so this is a lecture <coughs> mainly on uh, plane stress and plane strain but before going to that here is a brief classification of finite element analysis of structures and solids so by structures actually we mean discrete structures and continuous structures and obviously solids are continuous structures so under the uh, head of discrete structures so there can be 2d truss 2d frame and we have studied both and 3d truss and 3d frame and <coughs> under continuous structures or solids so this is finite element analysis of continuous structures and solids so again two dimensional structures and three dimensional continuous structures so under two dimensional continuous continuous structures there are plane stress plane strain problems plane stress plane strain elements axisymmetric elements and plate bending elements and uh, and we will study plane stress plane strain elements uh, uh, in this in this course and under uh, three dimensional continuous structures there is shell shell elements there are shell elements and 3d solid elements so now let us proceed to our study of plane stress and plane strain cases what are what is plane stress condition and what is plane strain condition so in plane stress in so you know that there are six stress components the three normal stress sigma x sigma y sigma z we also call it sigma z xx sigma yy sigma zz but for the sake of convenience we have dropped the second subscript and so we call sigma x sigma y sigma z and this tau x y tau y z and tau z x as you know they are the shear stresses so in plane stress condition sigma x sigma y tau x y they are non zero and sigma z tau y tau y z and tau z x they are zeros that means any stress which is having a z subscript is zero so it is called a plane stress conditions that means stress stresses in the xy plane are non zeros so so this occur in uh, plate structures or thin plate structures with in plane loading like a plate with a hole which is stretched like this or by stretched by other tensile or compressive loads but the loads have to be in the plane of the structure so thin plate structures with in plane loading these are also called called plate stretching problems so these are also called plate stretching problems so these are also called plate stretching so plate stretching problems so now if you write down the generalized hooke's law which you have already studied in your strength of materials course so epsilon x is equal to sigma x by e minus mu by e sigma y by sigma z and epsilon x epsilon y epsilon z these three are the normal strains and this is the direct extension and this is the poisson's effect you know so here there are two independent constants that is e and mu and it is for isotropic materials there are two material constants two material constants e and mu so these are the expressions for the normal stresses and these are the expressions for the shear stresses where gamma xy is this gamma yz is this and g you know is the shear modulus and also g is equal to e by because there are two material constants and g also can be expressed in terms of e and mu 
so now if you put sigma z equal to 0 so you put sigma z so here this is 0 sigma z here this is 0 and this epsilon z is this here this sigma z is 0 so you get epsilon z is this and epsilon z is non zero so in in plane stress problems epsilon z is there though sigma z is not there but epsilon z is there so these are the two equations and this is the shear strain so if you write it in a matrix form epsilon x epsilon y and gamma xy is this so this is nothing but writing this in matrix form and replacing g by e by 2 plus 1 plus nu now if you invert this relation invert this uh, matrix relation then you get sigma x sigma y sigma tau xy equal to this you can invert it in any uh, symbolic computation software like mathematica or maple or simpy or something like that and you will get this this so this is called the d matrix or the stress strain matrix so this matrix we will be using in finite element formulation but what is the strain energy as you know this is the strain energy expression half of this 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 and this this six components now in plain stress this tau y z zero tau z x zero and sigma z zero so only three terms remain that means it is this or this is the expression for the for strain energy now see in plane strain con in for plane strain conditions uh, uh, epsilon x epsilon y gamma xy are non zero and strains which have z subscripts are all zero so what are the examples of this case this case occurs in dam structures so this is water and this is a dam structure the dam is fixed at this end and at the other end so at this end and at this end the dam is fixed and water pressure is there so in these since these are long structures in the z direction long structure in the z direction and it cannot move in the z direction so epsilon z is zero and it is assumed that away from the away from the ends plane strain conditions prevail also you have studied uh, cylinders thick cylinders with both ends constrained so if this cylinder is subjected to internal and external pressure this at least away from these two ends away from these two ends this cylinder is you can assume that plane strain conditions prevail so now this is the, again the generalized hooke's law now if you put epsilon z0 epsilon z0 then then the last last relation is like this and if you put this value of sigma z in the other two relations here and here so you get epsilon x is this epsilon y is this and gamma x gamma y z and gamma z x are zero because gamma y z and gamma z x are zero so tau y z and tau z x are also zeros so this is gamma x y now if you write it in matrix notation you get this relation and if you invert this you get this so this is the this is the d matrix or the stress strain relation for plane strain plane strain cases so so for dam problems we will consider this dam to be a plane like this we will we'll take the slice and we will assume that this is subjected to plane strain conditions and you can do a full 3d analysis of this dam but that is costly so it is always better to if you want to get an approximate solution you take the plane strain conditions in a plane and this condition is valid at the center of this dam 
so you can you, you can make a 2d analysis of this problem so here also you see if you try to find out the strain energy the strain energy is like this epsilon z0 gamma y z0 gamma zx0 so this is the strain energy and this is the strain energy in matrix notation so you please note that the strain energy expressions are identical for both both plane stress and plane strain problems so they are always clubbed as the same case and in the finite element formulation only you have to change your d matrix accordingly the so same program will run for plane stress and plane strain problems but only you have to change your d matrix depending whether it is a plane stress case or a plane strain case